So, this uh, material is about explaining the way we will be working with the different challenges we have. As well, this material will repeat the different uh, options that you have as challenges and by the end will lead you to the different options you have for our first partial challenges. So I hope it is useful, it gives you all the material you need to begin working with the challenges. Uh, one important thing is that apart from this, of course, we will be having our working class. It is a, it is a very, very guided work. We will be constantly working on advancing this part. But it is important that you know what parts of this process are exclusively your responsibility, in which ways you have to advance on your own, and how to, <clears throat> to achieve to that part. So let's begin. So first, based learning. Challenge-based learning is a new of, uh, uh, teaching method in which you will be uh, engaging, researching, and acting upon a real-world problem. So it's a real-world challenge. It's something that is currently a problem, in the case of our class, a problem that Mexico or our community or our state or Mexico facing the world has. And therefore, what has to be proposed is a solution. So you will face this problem and you will require to create a, 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 a real solution as well. Yes, just as real as the challenge is, the solution must be real. It must be feasible, that is, it must be possible to apply it. And it also must be creative, since this is a current problem that many people haven't been able to sort out completely. Okay. Um, therefore, you will need to complete the part of knowledge that you need. You will need to make that jump between what you know today, what you question, all the way to what you need to know in order to give a solution to that challenge. And that jump will be, of course, guided by the teacher, which will act as, as coach, <coughs> sorry, a fellow researcher, which will help you get good sources, and as a designer of your final uh, solution, of your final solution. Idea, talking about specifically the solutions, the, the important part is not all of that, the solution, the important things are the ones that surround the solution. That is what you do before the solution and what you reflect on your learning based on the solution you proposed. Therefore, you will analyze, develop and execute this part. That is the important part. Um, <clears throat> the many times these challenges are, are so hard that of course, perhaps we will not get to make, yes, a solution that will, uh, create, yes, a change in the long term. It will most likely make an impact. It will most likely make a change in the short term. It will most likely get that. But we will be learning how to make these solutions on the long term. So that's the benefit. And also, again, the important part is not the solution itself, but the thing that happens before, which is all the covering of the steps we need in order to propose a solution and the things we do later, which is uh, reflecting a problem okay so now I'm going to talk about the process you will follow every single time you work with a challenge in your class so whenever we say we have a challenge you will be uh, you are expected to follow these different steps each of these steps has a part that is a responsibility of the teacher and a part that is responsibility of the student so it's important that you know you are not alone that it may seem at first as a difficult process but then again you will have every support you can in order to achieve this through your Team. Yes, but your team has to really take this seriously. The responsibility of following a challenge starts with the team really taking a, uh, an approach of uh, professionality and actually acting on its best own interest into solving or into trying to give a very good solution to this challenge. So, so this is the process you will be following. It's a step-by-step -step process. Uh, I reduced it to five main steps that you will be working on. So every challenge you work with will follow these same basic stages. Okay, let's go to the first one, which is a launch. The moment in which the teacher will give you the challenge, the moment in which the teacher will uh, show you, yes, the situation that you are facing and you will be prompted to overcome a challenge. So this material is usually either designed by the teacher or in the case of a challenge designed by you, it may be designed uh, it jointly by the teacher and you so what basically what this is is there is a problem in the real world we bring it to our classroom and we take a place and we take a stance in order to what is our are going to be 
our standing point in order to try to solve that challenge that we have facing us. So that launch is given by the teacher. Your responsibility is to pay very close attention to it so that you can take into account all the different things that is given. Most likely, most of the times it will be um, uh, given in very simple terms so that you can have a lot of liberty, a lot of freedom into exploring the following stages. Okay. So the launch stage is mainly a design, yes, made by your teachers, uh, and that's, um, uh, or in case you decide to design your, your own challenge, it's a part that has responsibility of both the student and teacher. Now, the research. Once that you have already uh, seen, yes, what is the challenge, you will begin building questions. For this, the teacher will guide a session in which your team will be building different questions. So. For this, you will, you will require the teacher to help you going and building the different questions that you know or you do detect you need to know about in order to solve this challenge. So it, the questions are not directly connected to, well, what is going to be the solution, but rather, what do I need to know in order to search for a solution, in order, in order to generate a solution? So the teacher's responsibility there is guiding that part. Then uh, uh, at that point, the students will be building questions will be making a list of a number of questions they need to solve and the next part on research is to gather high quality information and here the teacher participates by reviewing the list of sources that you are generating the different sources that you are planning to use in order to get your information and the responsibility of the student is gathering yes or uh, as many trustable sources that they can like filtering these sources which later the teacher will review and will accept so that you can uh, so that the idea of reviewing the sources is so that you do not lose time going perhaps uh, too far into sources that you may not be familiar with, but that you already make a prelim from which you already made actually a preliminary filter. Then, uh, once that is done, once you have all the information that you require, all the different uh, questions and the information that you require to answer those questions, uh, this uh, we move to the design stage, which is this creative uh, stage in which um, your team will confront all the different ways in which a solution may be given. So you will have uh, to propose different solutions. Your team will have to discredit many of them, trying to find failure or things that may not work with some solutions in order to try to find, to try to prove what is the best solution that you could come up with. So the idea here is the students will be generating all these different proposals. They will be um, discussing them, yes, to see which ones are the ones that will in the end stand the proof, the proofing, and the teacher will follow this this uh, process. Um, also, in in case they they are they are unable to take the best decision or they are uh, dubious about which would be the best decisions or the problems that all different solutions may have, in there they will have the guide of the teacher. And then in this design part, the last part is to implement a solution. That is you will give a solution to that challenge. Your many teams will have different ways of solving this, uh, this challenge. They will have different things to be done. They will have different things to be carried out. They will prepare different products or whatever it is that they decide is the best way to give a solution to that challenge. So that is the last part of that design process in which it is implemented. That solution is implemented um, either if it is going to be a written thing, it's going to be a video, it's going to be an action, it's going to be what is it going to be, it's up to the team. So that's that last part of that design. It's important that whatever it is that you do in the end in order to implement your solution, that you record evidence of it. If the idea is that your solution itself can be recorded uh, or, can be, or can be kept, yes, in a digital media, then it's great because it's a digital product. Otherwise, it's important that you gather evidence of what the application of your solution was in case your solution was not a product, but rather an action. Yes. Then we go to the part of presenting. Yes. The idea is that different teams yes, will uh, present their solution to the challenge. Now, they will not do so in class. The idea is that every team will gather what is their digital product or evidence and they will be putting it in uh, the, the referred section in our Facebook group. In our Facebook group, we will have a gallery in which we will have the different challenges pay, pay, uh, posted there as images. 
and as comments, the different teams will be posting what was their response, what was their uh, solution, okay? Like putting the, the link to the to either to the product they, they designed as a solution or to the evidence they have of the solution they gave to that challenge. The idea of putting it there is so that everybody else may take a look at it on their own time, may actually take a back and forth a look at it and will in the end be documenting the different responses that we may have. So that is the way we are going to present so that every group, for instance, may see what other groups did because everybody is choosing different challenge, challenges to work with so that you will get over there the perspective of everything that uh, that that has been done. OK, so um, it's important to mention that the, in the implementation part, whenever you do it, the, the, the best uh, idea is that you can make something that is real, that real people can see, that real people can 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 either feel if it is an action something that it can be that, that they can that they can experiment or if it is a product it is something that they can uh, respond to yes that, that 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 the real public the ones that are affected by a situation may have some contact with yes uh, so that you have a real audience on that on on that idea when you implement the solution and then we bring uh, our results for that to present to the group and then we move on to that so. That's a present. Uh, that's in order to present. It. Then, um, finally, we receive and provide feedback, uh, and this is the reflection part. So, uh, in order to receive the feedback, it will be required that, uh, as a response to every single team that posted their uh, product or their evidence, every other team posts a comment. Yes, a feedback. Yes putting a number of things. So it is important that they comment what is the thing they most liked about the solution they gave. What is one thing they would change? Yes, for instance. Um, and finally, yes, what is one thing that they admired about their thinking on their solution? Um, so these comments will be will be kept during the semester in that Facebook. So the idea is that uh, there is um, the image in the gallery that says challenge A. And in that challenge A, one team responds with their answer, with their solution. And then another team to that solution, they respond with their feedback once they get to see it. So the idea is that everybody gets to see everybody else's solution to the challenges that they choose. At the end of the semester, we will be having a final reflection in order to integrate the different things that we went through during the semester. So this is the process that will be happening uh, during every single one. Okay, so the launching, for instance, happens at uh, the very beginning of the challenge. This is what practically what we are doing through this material. Then research takes off in the classroom. Yes. Then searching for material takes off in the classroom as well. And then the sign takes off in the classroom. It's possible that you may take any other moment to actually follow through it. Then pre pre uh, presenting it takes place virtually and then reflection takes place towards the end, yes, as we advance to, to, towards the end of the semester. At least providing feedback is almost immediate, should be done after a week it is posted, one week after it is posted, and the reflection should be done, uh, sorry, the final integration will be done by each student at the end of the semester, okay? So these are the different processes that will take place, place on every single challenge that we do in the semester, which, uh, remember, it will be four in total for every formal team, yes? So, expectations. So every single step that you carry in this kind of way of working, it's a very free way of working. It's different from witnessing the class and just being there as that uh, uh, as that witness. Um, we'll have fulfilling them. Always question if your team is following each and every one of these. First one, feasibility in the real world. Question that if what you are doing is really feasible. Yes, it can really be done. Always be formal in the things that you present in the end, yes? And formality is not much about the format, but rather about the way you care about your the, the person that is witnessing what you are presenting, yes? Be professional in your research. Do not go into very shallow uh, material, go into academic articles, go into further media, for uh, better search engines that actually show you something in depth. Don't go, for example, with uh, media that is very shallow, go with real journalism, go with scientific journalism, go with a number of, of, of better sources, books, a number of things. Uh, the depth 
uh, that should be in your proposal is important. Your proposal should show that you understand the challenge itself, that you understand what is the problem and why it's so difficult. And finally, originality in the perspective overall, show a different approach. So some show something that perhaps nobody may be doing and that maybe more than you keep those um, ideas up. And finally, we have the different challenge options just to remind you of the different things that you have ahead. For uh, our first partial, you will take two options from the different challenges. So let me present you the different challenges. So we have challenge A. Challenge A is called Young Mexico. Challenge B is called Explaining My Government. Challenge C is called Macroeconomic Policies. Challenge D is called Democracy. So you will have to choose from any of these four, you will have to choose two in order so that your formal team works on them. Okay, at the final, uh, at the end of this material, you will get access to the explanation of the challenge on each of these, like, uh, like with the specific situation of each of these. So you will have to choose two from these. And remember, if you feel like the, none of these uh, actually call your attention, but you see something that is going on in the news, something that is important, something that you think needs to be addressed, then you have option E, which is creating your own challenge for this partial. Uh, for this, again, you will be guided, yes, in case you have a situation. So where does this challenge, where is this, where are challenges born? When you see there is a situation that needs a solution. When you see there is an important thing that needs a solution, something that worries you, perhaps something that touches you, something that has some relevance to you. That is the best thing you can have. What is my best advice for you to choose these two different challenges that you have an interest in them? That you have some kind of connection that there is something that you feel called by yes uh, that is the best thing you can do because a challenge may be as short or as large as you uh, so the same challenge may be very short for some maybe very large for some uh, what what changes is not the, what you have to solve yes the, the 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 solution that you have to give that is not what changes the challenges what the, the reason why you choose the challenge but it should be the passion and interest that you can find that you can have on a certain topic so that's important that you take into consideration in order to choose your uh your two um your two challenges for this first partial okay so it's also exciting to make your own challenge you're going to take it as something that is harder the idea is if you have a passion for a topic if you see there is something that needs a solution then let's go at it yes there may be something uh, I don't know, there may be many situations that we can have, okay? So the A, B, C, D are the ones that are being proposed by the teacher. The E is the one that, is, that you may actually build with the assessing of the teacher, okay? Then during the second partial, we have challenge F. There is only one challenge, which is called improving at Apuato. It's also a guided way on how to work on this topic. And finally, for uh, our last period on the semester, on the last weeks of our semester, we have two different things. We have challenge e which is a campaign which you will get also more details and uh there is also in the end an individual key assessment so any of the challenges you decide to do a b c d e, e during the first partial the two you are going to take challenge f challenge e all of them are in your formal team and finally there is a key assessment which is what you call your actividad eje which is the one that is individual and that will be an essay to reflect upon something which is the one that you enjoy the most or the one you uh, learn the most from yes during the semester so this is the perspective that we have for our challenges during this semester okay remember you will have time in classes guided time in class to work on this challenge so it's important that you really profit from it again it may seem like a lot but actually we're dedicating a lot of time from our classes in order to deal with this day. Well, let me present you the different challenges and the access to them. I hope you enjoy them, how you take into account all the effort that went into preparing them and that you may make something great with these different challenges or the one you are willing to present after you see the ones and get ready to actually propose an actual challenge on your own. So my best desire of uh, good luck on this 